In today's episode, we're gonna talk some TIG welding basics. We're gonna go over TIG welding polarity. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. To all the Arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up, welcome back, I appreciate you as always. To anybody that's new to the channel, welcome. I do all kinds of things TIG welding related. My favorite thing to do is TIG welding art. I've been doing a lot of it on the channel for the past year and I'm gonna be doing a lot more coming up here. So today, we're gonna go back to some TIG welding basics. We're gonna explain a super fundamental topic, welding polarities and what they're individually used for. For anybody that's not terribly familiar with this subject, it's all right, I got you. Let's take a look at a machine here and we'll see how they're laid out. So on this machine here, this is a traditional transformer type machine. These machines are typically laid out super easy to read. You usually see a big dial in the center somewhere on the machine that'll let you select between the three polarities that we're gonna be using with TIG welding. So as you can see on this picture here, this is a transformer type machine I just showed you. You will see on the left, DC negative, direct current negative on the left hand side. On the opposite side of that, on the right hand side, you'll see direct current positive, DC positive. And then up top in the middle, my favorite, is what we're gonna be using to weld stuff like aluminum, is AC, so that stands for alternating current. So let's break down what do these three polarities mean. So we'll start out first with DC negative, DC EN. So you'll see DC EN laid out a lot, stands for direct current electrode negative, also known as straight polarity sometimes. So with direct current negative, DC negative, what you're typically gonna have, the way it's gonna be set up is your torch is gonna be connected to the negative terminal on your machine, and then your ground clamp, which hooks onto the table, is gonna be hooked up to the positive terminal in your machine. So when you strike an arc, your heat is going to be coming from the welding torch to your workpiece, back to the ground, back to the machine. So basically an easier way, I heard Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks refer to this as a garden hose. Basically it's like a garden hose just pouring water out. Pretty easy to remember. But that's how it works for DC negative as far as the heat flow goes. So because we have all of our heat directed at our workpiece, we have no heat returning back up to the electrodes. So typically this is why you can tend to get away with running a sharpened electrode or a sharpened tungsten without it misshaping over time. Simply because all of the heat is directed into your workpiece, not the tungsten itself. It tends to work well as it creates a very narrow point of focus as far as the heat goes. So that's why it's really good for smaller type arcs and stuff, which you will typically see with a lot of stainless steel welding, uh, mild steel welding, titanium welding, in canal, uh, all kinds of other uh, reactive metals and whatnot, but uh, you, you get the idea. So those are the things we usually use DC negative for. for a loud truck to pass by. So those are the things we typically use direct current negative for. Quietest road in my area and somehow every time I try and do a video, trucks drive up and down the street. Okay, we're good now. So if we were to tend to flip that switch over to the other side of direct current, we're gonna be on direct current electrode positive, DC positive. So. If we were to swap our terminals around, like I'll show you right now, this is how you would typically switch to direct current positive. If you have a machine that does not have a, a terminal switch on the front of it, you can just flip your terminals around on the machine itself and you'll be setting it up on direct current positive. What is this truck doing? It's driving me crazy. So what this means is now our terminals are flipped around the other way. It's sometimes also referred to as reverse polarity, which makes sense because everything's just reversed from what I just explained on DC negative. DC positive typically is not used for a whole heck of a lot as far as TIG welding. It, it apparently can be used with uh, an argon helium mix uh, to weld some things like magnesium castings. This is something I have not done myself, but I did read it on the internet. So anything you read on the internet's definitely gotta be true. So like I said, because our current is gonna be reversed, all of our heat is gonna be coming up towards the tungsten. Anytime you set up on direct current positive and strike an arc, you'll notice that the tungsten just balls up on itself, wobbles everywhere, and if you add too much amperage on a pedal or something like that, it'll blow the tungsten apart. And uh, if you're running like a nice cup, like I am here from edge welding uh, and a gas screen and stuff like that, you will splatter tungsten all over the inside of your nice gear and totally wreck it. So beware. Uh, anytime you flip over to direct current positive, that you're using it for what you're intending to use it for. Don't flip it over by accident. 
But now having said that, like I said, there is one thing that I use it for all the time and that is what I'm gonna show you right now, balling my tungsten for aluminum. I always ball my tungsten for aluminum. Even on these small inverter type machines here where I can really dial in my balance, which I'll go over in a second here, I'll still put a small ball on the end of my tungsten. So all you do for this, like I said, if you're welding on AC ready to weld aluminum, I'll flip it over to DC positive real quick. Or if I'm in my shop here where I have inverter type machines where I don't have a polarity switch on the front of it, I'll just swap the terminals. Swapping the terminals like we talked about is basically you set it on direct current and then you swap it to either positive or negative, whatever you want to use. And then you can ball your tungsten up real nice. For me, myself, that's pretty much all I use direct current positive for. Um, but uh, like I said, there are other uses for it out there, but for what I do, especially what I do in this shop here, that's all I use it for. So my favorite setting on a machine, AC. So AC stands for, can you guess? Alternating current. Can you guess what happens when you flip it to alternating current? That's right, it flips back and forth really, really fast between DC negative and DC positive. So with certain types of machines, you'll hear something that's referred to as frequency. So frequency, what it does is it adjusts the hertz that your machine is set to weld at. So a typical transformer type machine is always set at, do you know, 60 hertz. And what this means is that your machine in alternating current or AC setting will flip between positive and negative 60 times per second. With the cool new inverter type machines like the ones I got here, I got one from Canaweld. Uh, it's a super nice machine. I got another one from Everlast, another dope machine I have here. What you can do is you can adjust your frequency. So what I mean by adjusting your frequency is now you can increase the amount of time that your machine will cycle between negative and positive per second. So with my machines here, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think you can crank them up to about 200 to 240 hertz. So that means that your AC cycle will be happening 240 times per second or whatever you set it up. If you set it up at a frequency of 120 hertz, it's gonna be cycling 120 times per second. You get the idea. But what it does is it takes kind of the best things of both sides and uses them all in one as a superpower to weld aluminum. On your negative side, you get the focused welded area, which is really, really nice. However, on the other side of that dial, you get direct current positive. So like we talked about, direct current positive helps to keep our tungsten clean. So it will direct some heat back up towards our tungsten. And uh, what you can do is use your AC balance to adjust a little bit more or a little bit less of the positive side of the cycle to have a little bit more cleaning action or a little bit less, up to you. But I like to adjust this pretty frequently. So if I'm welding something at a really low amp on alternating current, I typically find I need to run a little bit higher on the positive side of the balance. So I'll typically be running a 65-35 ratio. So 65% uh, being negative side, 35% being the positive side. Again, each machine's different. Every variable is totally different, tungsten size, um, everything will change that, but that's typically tend to run a little bit higher positive side at lower amperage and then change it when I'm welding something hotter so the tungsten doesn't flutter on me. So another thing that the positive side of this cycle is really important for when it comes to aluminum welding is breaking through the oxide surface on aluminum itself. So for everybody that doesn't know, a piece of aluminum will come with an oxide coating on the top. And what typically happens, if you were to just run direct current negative, it will strike an arc on the aluminum. However, what it's not gonna do is it's not gonna clear or break up that oxide on the surface. So I'll show you a clip right now. You can indeed, and I'm doing this right now, I'm welding, believe it or not, in DC negative on aluminum. It looks like total, total garbage. Uh, I'll show you as I grind it off here a little bit, you can see what's underneath. There is weld underneath there. However, it's totally oxidized, pretty much like a garbage weld. Uh, I w don't even know if I would do it in a pinch, but uh, you can weld on DC negative. But the positive thing, <laughs> the positive thing about DC positive is it will clear that oxide off for you. So you'll be able to weld aluminum with the direct focus arc that you need to weld it and get heat on it really fast to create that puddle. And then the positive side of the cycle will break and clear that oxide away. That's usually what that white line is on either side of your weld. It's the cleaning action where the weld has basically cleaned a path for itself, like a little snow plow or something. So that's it. Now you know. It's funny, I welded for many, many years just knowing how to turn the machine on and ball my tungsten. I didn't know what any of this polarity stuff meant. After I learned how to weld, I actually went back and got taught a lot of the theory uh, in school, which I now know and I like to share with people who are just learning because it's a lot of fun to actually learn this stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this episode today. This one was kind of fun. I liked uh, 
I like just breaking down theory sometimes. It's a pretty easy thing for me to communicate and communicate it in a sense that most people can understand because I need things broken down pretty simply for myself. <laughs> so I find it pretty easy to put it forward for other people to understand, or at least I hope it was. So again, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the channel. That helps my channel out a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media. There it is right there. Uh, jump on Instagram, say what's up to me. Uh, that's typically the way I keep in touch with most people. I tend not to be able to keep up with all the YouTube comments. So if you really wanna say what's up, uh, if you got any show ideas or topic ideas, hit me up on Instagram. I will try my best to get back to you as fast as I can. Also, be sure to check out my website. There it is, pacificarctigwelding.com. Bounce on there, you can see my art gallery of all my art pieces I've done so far, as well as information on my online course. I teach people how to TIG weld online. I've been doing it for like six months now and it's going really, really good. Teach people all the basics of aluminum TIG welding in a super easy to understand way that helps a lot of people get started with absolutely no experience. So if you're interested in that, go to the website, check it out, shoot me an email, we'll talk a little bit, we'll see if you're a good fit, and uh, we'll try and fit you in with a, a program start where I have room to take on a new student. So the only other thing I leave you with today is to go out and do a random act of kindness. We're talking about positive polarity, let's go do something positive for a stranger today. <laughs> a random act of kindness. I always encourage it at the end of every episode. The world needs as much positivity as, uh, as possible right now, so. If you, uh, if, you see a, if you see a guy fall down the stairs, uh, don't stand there and film him and laugh. <laughs> go, go help him out. Help an old lady across the street. Uh, they don't, uh, not that old ladies can't cross the street by themselves. You know what I'm saying. Just do something nice for a stranger. But again, for everybody that watches all the way to the end of these episodes, I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. Again, my name's Dusty from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. Have a good one. Peace.